Welcome back to Gallery Guichard. Virtually, I'm Andre Guichard, artist, curator, collector. And I'm Frances Guichard, artist, collector, curator, and co-owner of Gallery Guichard. This is the moment a lot of people have been waiting for, a chance to get into the mind of Shane Ward. Behind us in this room is Gallery Guichard exhibit space number two, and it is where we're going to walk you in virtually, and you can see the pieces on exhibit before the show opens, but more importantly, we're about to take you for a conversation with Mr. Ward and find out what is the motivation and inspiration behind this creative work. Can't wait to talk to you, Shane. It's going to be awesome. Sit back and relax as we enjoy a very intriguing conversation about the motivation and inspiration about this unique blend of fine art and athletic wear. Hi, Shane. It's such a pleasure to finally meet you. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Nice to meet you as well, Francis. It's been a, a really great journey. Um, just getting to know you all and finally get to just see your face and put a a face and a voice to a name. So great to meet you. Well, what's nice is that you already knew Andre. Um, I believe your sister lived next door to him. Yeah, serendipitous um, uh, encounter and meeting Andre. Um, my oldest sister, Robin, who's just a wonderful spirit, uh, used to live next door to Andre. And that's how he met myself and my twin brother, the rest of my family and our mom. So yeah, a really, really fortunate encounter. Excellent. It's all, it's how it, sometimes it happens, you know, things come in full circle. So yeah, I feel fully yeah. lucky. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is so exciting because you know, you've got a great history. You're young, but you got a great history with a great story. So of course our audience is going to want to know all about you and what you're doing. But first, um, I just want to acknowledge that Andre is on the line. I'm not sure if he's yes. Or Yes, there he is. Uh, I am, and I just wanted to comment and apologize for not being live on camera, but I am so excited just because it really feels surreal to be in this place in time right now in history because of who your family is, very, very warm family, and even your grandmother I can remember meeting, and I'm sorry, even your mom, meeting and just thinking, boy, this is a really warm, wonderful family. And over the years, of course, we became like friends. But I remember briefly them talking about your aspirations and your entry business almost 18, 20 years ago. So um, no, more like 25 years ago. So that is really a beautiful full circle story. And I'm curious to how you were able to move through that journey and then transfer into your studio space and your art. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you, um, Andre, for those really kind words. And yeah, the journey has been one that has been very fulfilling, has been one of self-reflection and just inspiration overall. Uh, my background is industrial design, started in the business, um, designing shoes for Adidas and have designed shoes for Adidas for the last 25 years. Um, as you mentioned, I had my own business for a while with my twin brother, which was one of the most rewarding experiences I've ever had. It was called Detney by Shane and Sean. And now I'm back um, at Adidas for my second run living in Los Angeles and have had the, the really the, the wonderful um, privilege of working with some of the most creative minds um, today within the fashion style innovation space. I have worked with um, Ye for a while um, on projects within the Yeezy space. And then now working with Jerry Lorenzo at Fear of God um, has, has been an incredible um, path for me to uh, really start to take all the experience I have in footwear design and then combine it with um, sensibilities of fashion style and the vision um, of our partners. But as I started to think about um, this space of creation within the art world, it really it really started um, in full um, back in 2020 um, during the um, 
like the COVID pandemic and everyone pretty much being home. And I had a time to just really reflect on things that made me happy, things that brought um, a lot of joy and um, accomplishment to my soul and my spirit. And that led me to pull out an old piece of uh, old canvas that I have from my college days. I hadn't painted in 20 years. And it was basically a blank, a blank sheet. Even though there was a, a painting on that canvas, I decided to paint over it and really start thinking about what did I have to say within this space? Because there's so many great artists, uh, there's so many great mediums. Um, and if I was going to engage myself, I wanted to make sure that I had something specific and unique to say um, so that the viewers and individuals that experience my work uh, would feel uh, that spirit and that emotion, that inspiration. So I started with what I love most and what I know most, and that's footwear. And um, when I started to paint, I was painting high heel shoes, and then and it just naturally came out of me with this ethereal kind of butterfly effect onto footwear. But then I start to think even deeper um, about, um, you know, what type of shoes that I want to paint. And I started to think about one of my, my biggest life mentors and creative mentor, his name is Peter Moore, who passed away about six months ago. Um, he was my creative director at Adidas my first time around. And he was a multidisciplinary uh, designer. He was a graphic designer, footwear designer, creative director, photographer, and artist. And I wanted to just pay homage and respects to his legacy because he designed the original Air Jordan 1. And so I chose that particular model um, to start painting. And then the butterfly effect of what was just um, something really beautiful manifested itself into cherry blossoms, actually. Um, and I just thought about cherry blossoms and butterflies, how they have this metaphorical um, kind of experience to them and the metaphor of bringing life um, into the world and then also knowing that that life um, sometimes can be very limited as well but then the spirit of that visual and that expression is everlasting so i thought that very emotional spiritual space um, and the metaphors of butterflies and and cherry blossoms combined with sport and athletics and something really kind of um aggressive in a way would be this unique juxta juxtaposition to bring together that I hadn't been seen before. And when I started to paint um, and embellish these iconic footwear models with cherry blossoms, um, specifically the Air Jordan 1, it just felt right. And I entered the space not really having high ambitions to you know, have a show or share this work to a multitude of people. It was just more of just getting something out of my soul. And that's how the uh, journey started. Wow, that's awesome. And, and you know, I noticed in your, your artwork, it, it appears as though the gym shoe is either coming together, melting away or disintegrating, but also, you know, being dispersed. So your butterflies and your cherry blossoms are being dispersed in a way in which it is so cool. Can you tell us a little bit about why you did that and then also what mediums you're using? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'll just start with the mediums. Uh, the medium I'm using um, are acrylics. Uh, just love working with acrylics uh, because of the how fast it dries, um, the color expressions that you can work with. And it just feels, because of my experience within design, it feels like very comfortable uh, for me to engage um, uh, with acrylics, especially on canvas. Um, and then what you spoke of, like the withering away of the cherry blossoms and then also the butterflies, that uh, manifested itself because I thought about this kind of transition of life and how life and even like humans, like we do like start to wither away as we um, experience our life on in this world, um, very similar to butterflies and, and cherry blossoms. Um, but that spirit that you see and that you experience will never die. And that's the um, kind of irony also within fashion industry. You think of like the AJ1 and some of the iconic Adidas shoes that um, I painted, they're always gonna be around. There's, they're icons. They, the, what they bring to the world sometimes is like this moment of hype and coolness uh, within uh, fashion. Um, and then sometimes they die off, but the spirit of those models, they never leave. And so that's why I decided to um, have 
that kind of like withering and the ethereal expression of the butterflies and cherry blossoms moving away. And then also I just felt like it was very beautiful to see how they come together and create um, something that's very identifiable. But then as they wither away, there's this like really um, kind of magnificent visual that it expresses when you start to see them break apart and they become their own entities and they break off of the canvas and you can almost feel them breaking off even into off the canvas. So that was why I kind of went with that spirit. It was just something that uh, felt really, really right at the moment. And it also made sense from a philosophical standpoint. Yes, yeah, awesome. Because I just want to say one more thing about that. When you take a picture of it with your camera, it almost looks three dimensional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, yes. I'll spin on that. A lot of people think the work is three dimensional. So even when they mm -hmm. see it in person, they have to get really close on it because they thought it was three dimensional. So really, I love your painting technique that you're able to accomplish that dimension. Awesome. Now, thank you for that. And I did quite a bit of research. It was a I think that's the designer part coming um, out in me that um, I did research on how to paint butterflies and cherry blossoms. And then I applied that to just skills that I've had and blending color and, and making objects look more three dimensional. And to the point where I've had um, individuals ask, are you painting each one of those cherry blossoms and each one of those butterflies? And I said, yeah, absolutely. Uh, because it does take a high level of concentration and consideration to make them look three-dimensional. So thank you for noticing that. Yes, yes, very nice. So, you know, I want to ask a question about two phenomena that I think you're intersecting very well, which is the phenomena of art appreciating, which we all know that happens, but also the phenomena of gym shoe appreciation and how mm -hmm. to choose our collectible items and how you're taking significant collectible images and fusing them mm -hmm. with fine art, which is of course archival and collectible. So if you could touch a bit about that, you know, because it's a kind of a, it messes with your mind because we mm -hmm. all know juice, gym shoes are valuable. We know art is valuable, but if you could tell us a bit about that. Absolutely. Uh, that is, the depth and layers that you're speaking to, um, Andre, of the, it's a huge phenomenon that is we've seen kind of actualized throughout our lives. I mean, I'm a, I was born in the seventies, grew up in the eighties and the nineties, and you had sneakers and then you also had dress shoes and dress shoes were what you wore out to dinner or family affairs or, or in a date, um, or to church. Now you fast forward to where we are now and literally individuals can tell you men and women they will wear their sneakers with a dress like like you're wearing uh francis or how we wear shoes we don't wear the square toe kenneth coles anymore our my dress shoe now is an adidas forum i'll wear it with a suit <laughs> and so it's also a reflection of what's happened in culture uh, because sneakers are just so ubiquitous with their comfort and then with their dynamic expressions of color and materials that it it almost forced um, society to understand that, okay, casualization and um, bringing sneakers into our everyday lives is something that just feels right. Now, when it gets to this phenomenon of collecting, this is something I couldn't foresee, um, that we are looking at shoes that were purchased at one point in time under $100. Uh, but now, if you look at resale markets, because of the way these sneakers are being dropped to the market, they're being dropped in limited numbers. And then there's hype behind them because there's collaborations that are going on from these companies through Dior, or Louis Vuitton, brands that you never thought would intersect from a luxury space into sneaker space is happening now. And that's created this phenomenon of collectors who will buy these products, wait in line, not just physically, but then wait in line on the apps to make sure that they get in on lotteries to grab these particular models, knowing that the rest of the globe is highly interested in receiving those. And then they resell them on the market for thousands of dollars. Um, that I'd, I never foresaw that. Um, the fact that it's here is, is something I believe is, is good to celebrate uh, because, I mean, there's art in this. There's appreciation 
for the details that have gone into the design of those icons because there's been millions of shoes that have been designed but what separates the ones that you know we all like cherish and put on a, a mantle so it's something that um is phenomenal to like understand and think about the psyche that led to where we are now and i'm just happy to be a part of how do we celebrate um what's happening right now in this uh, sneaker culture yeah that's awesome yeah and you know people are collecting shoes just like they're collecting artwork now <laughs> my nephew absolutely is a shoe collector <laughs> Jim <laughs> <is a> sneaker <laughs> collector so with that um, what comes next what where, where, where are you taking mm. your artwork to next i just love to see or pick your brain about what you're thinking about for future works i love that francis um i'll kind of back i'll go back a little bit to go forward on what's next uh one of the biggest inspirations that i had while i entered this space was uh virgil ablo and you know he's a he was a son of chicago um you know he was the the creator of off white um he was the first black african and african american to be basically crowned the head of um a luxury house with louis vuitton as their men's creative director he was such an inspiration for myself and so many creatives as i would say uh, because he designed he created fashion lines he created art he also created music and he was really a beacon of light and inspiration to say creatives you don't you never have to limit yourself um you can create in multi in a multitude of disciplines and mediums and so it gave me the strength to go out and paint but now he's given me um the strength and inspiration to maybe look at other mediums like um sculpting for example i think it would be very fascinating um eventually to have um objects that have the same spirit and aesthetic and ethos of the paintings but as a three-dimensional object. So it's something that has been um let's say uh ideated within my brain. Um I have talked to a few people about like how does that come to life? Um because you have the withering of the butterflies and also um the cherry blossoms. How does how do you make that happen in three dimension? And so that would be something I'm going to be highly focused on, I believe, after coming out of uh this exhibition. Awesome. I I can I see it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I did it is awesome. And I'm going to excited about that. Uh, yeah, and I'm very excited again about your journey and how the power of your mind and the mind to take something that like you mentioned had a definition in society, even had a functional role, but you know how all of this including you and everyone else, you know, in that movement with the shoe has changed it to become a symbol of elegance. So what would yes. you say to a young artist who is coming out here and he's afraid to try something, he doesn't believe if you could just speak on, you know, kind of your journey and how you confronted your fears to get mm -hmm. to where you are today. Yeah, that's that's a fantastic um question Andre and I think as creative sometimes you can um what go through this stage of paralysis through analysis because we have these hopes and dreams of you know bringing our art to the world and you know possibly being you know the next Kahinde you know or the next Daniel Arsham um but if you listen to those stories like they started off incrementally it wasn't this just big you know overnight success and i went through that phase also of just sitting on paintings and not knowing if anyone would gravitate towards them and it wasn't until i started speaking to my family where they were just like Shane just just post it share it like you're not doing this to um try to become those individuals overnight you're just doing it because you love it so just just share it you know without any anticipation of what's going to come behind it you're just getting out what you feel onto canvas And so um my sister Robin was a big supporter or and someone who helped me create that confidence and just hit send. And I would recommend um artists who are looking to come into a space and even though they have high aspirations, just share. Just share to the world like what you're thinking and what you're feeling and they the response will allow you to start 
carving out your space, giving you that confidence and just taking it step by step. Awesome. Yeah, but you know, you sold already yeah, three pieces. Yes. So today we have another confirmed sale. First pre-sale of the show. That's <laughs> the, big piece. the marquee piece. I mean, Seven by eight. Yes. No, we are really excited for you. And the response when we went to DC was just people were like, you could see their goose pimples rising, you know, coming and mm -hmm. being at work. So it is exciting when you think about that story of you were a person who didn't know and you you were afraid to press the send button, but now mm -hmm. time and reality have happened. People are really excited about the work. So I'm really excited and we can all share this with the world now on our virtual exhibition catalog. Guests will be able to drop into virtual exhibition catalog number 33 and enjoy Metamorphos virtually. And you can walk around and touch the matter tag and you'll be able to see the title medium artist and you can use the circles to move around and walk around in the exhibit. So it will be just like you're there. The only thing I'm concerned is they may, they may, there may not be a lot of pieces left because I feel like this is going to be a sellout. Right. And you know, the funny thing about it is there is just, uh, you, you have seven pieces. So now we have six more pieces left to sell. So people better hurry okay. up and get it while it's hot right now. And if they are interested in getting it, they can go to our website at www.gallerygishard.com. And if they're interested in purchasing a piece, they can contact us at galleryguichardsocial@gmail.com. at gmail.com. So Shane, we are so proud. We are so happy to be representing you and your work is amazing. Yes, so I always say it, see art, love art, buy art, live with original art. And in the case of Shane, study long, study wrong, exactly. because I don't think these pieces <laughs> are wrong around much longer. Thank you, Shane, for taking time to share with our viewers and look forward to seeing you this week. Yes, thank you, Shane. I know you're on the road, so stay safe and have fun. Will do. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate you both uh, for giving me the platform and all of your support. L really looking forward to the exhibition. Wow, that really helps me because <laughs> I still remember him as a young man next door to his sister at his sister's house. I still remember him as a young man next door to us on Giles Avenue in Bronzeville. And who would have thought he would rise to the top and be exhibiting at Gallery Guichard? Yeah, it was an amazing conversation. Shane is so awesome. I just love the conversation that we had with him. And I think everyone else is going to enjoy this as well. I know they will. As a matter of fact, I know they're gonna to wanna to purchase something. That's and great. if they do, they can drop down into Gallery Guichard at www.galleryguichard.com. And if they want to contact us, they can contact us at galleryguichardsocial at gmail.com. It's as easy as one, two, three. You too can preview these works before they're available and touch the matter tag for the title medium price. There are a limited number of works in this solo exhibit, less than 10. So while they're oversized, they're few and far between. Study long, study wrong. So as we say, see art, love art, buy art, live with original art.